Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I will be presenting our work on Metaverse for safer roadways. So I'll just brief out the agenda for today's presentation. First, we'll talk about the digital twin framework that we have developed. The second part of the presentation will focus on a mixed factorial user study to evaluate different user interfaces. And these include both observation as well as interaction interfaces uh, with driving capabilities. And finally, we will talk about a multi-factor case study of a jump scare scenario where we evaluate different modalities of uh, autonomous and manual driving uh, to see how the developed framework acts in the application space. So first, a little bit of context and motivation. So the problem statement that motivated us for this research was about autonomous and manually driven vehicles coexisting. As we all know, autonomous vehicles cannot be deployed overnight, nor can we expect human drivers to stop driving altogether suddenly. So while autonomy uh, deployments are on their way, autonomous and manually driven vehicles will have to coexist on the roadways. And this creates challenges in terms of difficulty in tracing liability of accidents, especially those involving a mix of autonomy, autonomy as well as human driven vehicles, where who is at fault is still a difficult question to answer. And therefore, consequently, validating mixed autonomy uh, scenarios where you have both human as well as autonomous driving agents becomes challenging. And that is what uh, is the core crux of uh, motivation for our research. So in terms of validation, uh, we can validate in two different ways. One is pure real world validation, where you have realistic social behaviors. You can actually uh, have human drivers drive vehicles. You can have different autonomous driving algorithms interfaced to now see how they interact and behave with each other. However, because of the innate limitation of real world validation in terms of safety, this becomes hazardous and potentially if human drivers are involved uh, in some cases unethical when uh, human subjects are not informed well ahead of time. Another uh, mode of validation is simulation based validation where you have a safe virtual proving ground so that alleviates the challenge posed by the real world validation. However, it brings its own challenge in the fact that fidelity of interaction dynamics, the modeling of social driving agents becomes very difficult and uh, may or may not represent the true nature of how actual real world systems behave, both manual and uh, autonomous. So what we propose in our work is to have a true human in the loop presence, which alleviates the second problem of simulation where you have good amount of variability and uh, richness of data in terms of human feedback and propose an immersive digital twin framework, which kind of alleviates the pain point of real world validation uh, because we can now mix both real and virtual worlds to bring out the best of both. So what you see on the right is a overview diagram of our research where we have a real world vehicle uh, driving in the real world whose states are estimated and then a digital twin of it is updated in real time within the virtual space. And the digital twin basically can be now put through different use cases. Uh, it can interact with different interaction and observation interfaces in manual driving scenarios. And the live feedback of uh, digital twin controls is now fed back to the physical twin to complete the digital thread where you have a complete human in the loop presence within an immersive digital twin framework. Let me now take a moment to describe the digital twin framework. We call it the auto drive ecosystem and it's comprised of three key pillars. First one is the test bed, which basically means vehicles, infrastructure, user interface, as well as communication interfaces in the real world. You then have the simulator, which is the same things now in the digital space. And finally, a dev kit to now develop autonomy algorithms pertaining to autonomous driving, as well as smart city management with a whole host of APIs and frameworks to support. So in essence, the vehicles can be, as I said, real world in case of the test bed where the columns first and third represent real world uh, photographs, or they can be digital assets uh, as represented by the second and uh, fourth column. They can span across different scales. Uh, you have got small scale, mid scale, as well as full scale vehicles, as well as operational design domains where you have uh, on road driving applications, autonomous racing applications, off road op applications, as well as uh, commercial applications. Uh, you also have varying scales of environments that are representative for uh, respective scale of vehicles. And of course, they can be cross-matched uh, for deployments 
across different scales and operational design domains. And finally, uh, you have different human in the loop interfaces for both observing and interacting with these digital twins. Uh, they can either control the real world vehicles, uh, physically interfacing them with the communication bridge or digitally interfacing the digital twins of the vehicles within these uh, setups. Or uh, as we'll see ahead uh, in the presentation, we can have a mix of both real and virtual assets being controlled using these HMIs. So let me uh, now talk about a user study that we performed to analyze the quality and effectiveness of different user interfaces for both observing and interacting with the digital twins. So we started with the Bob G. Whitmer presence questionnaire, uh, which comprised of various questions in the form of rating. And we analyzed those ratings on a seven point Likert scale. So the different factors that can be measured using the presence questionnaire uh, include the what's named as factor one is the involvement uh, of the user within the virtual environment. The second one talks about the sensory fidelity in terms of how rich or good is the virtual environment compared to a real world one. Uh, the third factor talks about the adaptation or immersion where how much the user was immersed, how could he differentiate himself with, with, uh, sitting within the room or immersed in the virtual environment uh, is of question. And finally, the fourth factor talks about the interface quality in terms of the discomfort experienced by the user. What we did was decoupled uh, these uh, questions presented in the original questionnaire uh, and filtered them out. So we first uh, filtered out 21 questions relevant to our study and then decoupled them uh, based on the observation or interaction modalities. So uh, the questionnaire that we have has 11 questions about the observation interfaces and 10 questions about the interaction interfaces uh, that we asked the users. The users for our study were uh, of different ages, uh, genders, and have different experience in terms of driving, gaming, or experiencing uh, extended reality or mixed reality frameworks. The experiments were designed to be a four cross four mixed factorial study where we had four different observation interfaces and four different interaction interfaces. And these were now counterbalanced uh, to now ensure that the sequence doesn't matter. So we analyzed the results that uh, the users gave based on their answers. Uh, the trends that you see here indicated that the first factor uh, is proving to be uh, worst for the single monitor setup. The triple monitor and the uh, static uh, head mounted display where the visual feed is not updated or the rendering is not updated as the user moves or tilts their head are almost of equivalent uh, significance. Whereas the dynamic uh, HMD where the uh, mixed reality feed actually updates based on movement and tilting of the head is preferred the most. For the second factor, uh, all the three modalities, uh, including stat uh, single monitor, triple monitor, and static head mounted display perform equally, uh, whereas the dynamic head mounted display stands out prominently. For the fourth factor, we have almost equivalent uh, performance across all the different observation interfaces. But uh, based on the statistics, we can see that the dynamic HMD has slightly better uh, ratings. And finally, for the fourth factor, which basically uh, denotes the discomfort of the users, uh, we observed that the static head mounted display gave uh, the most discomfort. And the reason for this was that because of naturalistic uh, behaviors or expectations, uh, human would expect while that head tilts or moves, the dynamic uh, feed of the simulation would get updated, but that did not happen and that gave the most discomfort. Similarly, for uh, interaction uh, interfaces, we had similar trends moving from keyboard to driving rig would basically have more immersion. The second factor was almost equivalent as in case of the observation interfaces. And finally, the discomfort levels were also equivalent where keyboard and mouse gave the most discomfort as opposed to gamepad or driving rig. So in total, uh, the combined interface of best combination was a head mounted display with driving rig. But uh, as we'll see in our in vehicle experiment, the second best choice of interaction was the gamepad, which was used.
So in coming to the case study, we designed the experiment to uh, include the OpenCV, which is the vehicle that you see here, uh, and the auto drive ecosystem, which, which is the digital interface that you see here, and uh, had a human operator uh, run the simulation within the vehicle and control the vehicle in case of manual experiments. The driving scenario here is a jump scare scenario of emergency braking where the vehicle keeps driving uh, straight uh, and there is a non-ego vehicle that cuts in, in front of it without any warning and that has to basically be respected by the ego vehicle by emergency braking and we uh, control the ego vehicle in four different modes where you have a complete autonomous vehicle, a connected autonomous vehicle which has V2B communication with the non-ego vehicle, a uh, human user with static head mounted display and a human user with dynamic head mounted display. So here is a quick glimpse of how the experiment looked like. Uh, the real world vehicle drives itself as I mentioned in one of the earlier slides. The digital twin of it is updated in the virtual world. You don't have a real world non-ego vehicle which basically makes this experiment safe. And there is non-ego vehicle immersed only in the virtual world. Coming to more quantitative results, we analyzed that autonomous vehicle uh, would observe the non-ego vehicle just in time. The same applied with uh, human user with static head mounted display. Uh, consequently, they had uh, respectively the worst acceleration and deceleration, but human performed a little bit smoothly. The connected autonomous vehicle uh, could well ahead of time detect the non-ego vehicle because of the V2B communication and as a result had much smoother deceleration uh, as you see from the graphs uh, and similarly it had the uh, privilege of stopping well ahead of time instead of uh, things like the autonomous vehicle braking uh, just in time and traveling the longest distance. Finally coming to the uh, human user with dynamic head mounted display uh, they could comfortably detect the vehicle by moving or tilting their head and uh, as a result come to a safe stop well before the static head mounted display human users or the connect uh, the autonomous vehicle and uh, have the least uh, travel distance in in uh, all across all the experiments that we had so in conclusion we uh, talked about the development of the digital twin framework uh, mixed user study where we analyze the interface quality uh, of different observation and interaction user interfaces and finally presented a case study which binded all of this together uh, for a mixed human autonomy coexistence. So we thank uh, everyone for your time and here are a few resources if anyone is interested about the paper or auto drive in general and we would be happy to answer any questions at this point.